Hi, friends. Let's continue our education on digestive tract. And the topic of the conversation today is bad breath or halitosis. And I will share with you some ideas what you can do to eliminate bad breath. I will show you the tools and uh, it will take a little bit to deal with that, but the success is going to be yours. So what can cause bad breath? Dry mouth, medications, food. The more junk food you eat, bread, pizza, pasta, cookies, candy, soft drinks, the more bad breath you're going to have because uh, uh, sweet food will feed the bacteria that lives in your digestive tract in your mouth and bugs will reproduce and they will create bad smell. So smoking is absolutely no, no. One of my subscribers asked, is it possible that acid reflux created uh, bad breath? And the answer is not exactly, but you need to understand a little bit why a person asked this question. So this is the mouth, this is the teeth, and it's connected here through this opening with different organs. Here on the top, it's connected to the nose and the sinuses. So the theoretically speaking, bacterial infection in the, si in the sinuses can create a bad breath. Here's the pipe goes down into bronx and pulmonary tree and theoretically speaking, so severe bronchitis, tuberculosis can create a bad breath. This pipe in the neck is going to the esophagus and it goes into the stomach. If you have problems in the stomach, so the air from the stomach can go here and create a bad breath. In practice, I never seen a single patient with that. Yes, there is a literature about that, that severe tuberculosis can create a bad breath. But usually, the cause of bad breath is poor dental hygiene. 99.9% .9 of people um, don't know how to deal with that. I will teach you now how to do that. So keep this picture in mind. So you have a gaps between the teeth, gums, and um, uh, here's the teeth. So you need to clean teeth, gums, and the tongue. And with all of that, let's go. Uh, please like, subscribe. Let's go and I will sh share the tools and I will teach you how to do that. Um, when you go first time to dentist, a good dentist will, uh, will check your pockets. Funny I said that, but it, it re they really do check your pockets, but that's what I had in mind. So um, suppose this is your tooth, right? This is the tooth, this is the uh, root of the tooth, and this is the gum. The dentist will take a sharp tool and uh, they'll stick the sharp tooth here and they check how much space you have between gum and the tooth. And he will say three, two, three. That means three milli millimeters depth here, two here, and three here. And he will do that around every single tooth. Between two and three millimeters, that's the normal depth of the pocket. More than that is abnormal. So if you have four millimeters, that means that the pocket deep, four millimeters, food gets stuck there, bacteria reproduce, and that's what creates a bad breath. So you need to clean those pockets. So let's start with the devices. Here is the um, brush pick that I use after the meal. Um, this is the tooth and you take the brush pick and you clean it, clean it, clean it here. You can see there are bristles here, and there is also kind of sharp and rough edge here. So you can scrape everything on the side. Similar tool will do the job. It uh, looks like that from the CVS or Continental. And it has also brush here and you put a little bit uh, a toothpaste here and you brush it like that. The next tool called gum stimulator. It comes from CVS. This part is a metal and uh, this part sharp is the plastic. You buy once and then you use uh, replace plastic with uh, replacement. So this is mine. And what you do with this tool, you actually literally go into those pockets and you remove the food debris and bacteria from both sides of, of the tools. And you do it all around the mouth from outside and from inside. The next tool is the Sharpie and it comes with the mirror. The purpose of this tool is to go and actually scrape the calcium deposits that can accumulate here to make sure that you don't have calcium, then the food is, uh, will have a difficult time to, 
to be stuck there. And there is no food, there is no bacteria, there is no smell. The mirror, the purpose of the mirror is so you can look in the mirror and see what's going on in, inside. So what you do, you, take, you stay in front of the mirror, you take this mirror, you lick it, make sure that it's not getting foggy and you open your mouth and put it inside. Uh, and then you can see what's going from other side and use the Sharpie to clean it between it, the teeth to remove the calcium deposit. So many people use for the same purpose, dental floss and there are variations of dental floss. They are done with the teeth, they are clean. The next step is the tongue. People use tongue cleaner uh, or they, they, they use soft brush just in front of the mirror, eh, 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 brush them. When you use um, tongue cleaner, make sure that you don't put too much pressure, otherwise you will damage the tongue and it's going to be painful. So just lightly remove the bacteria and the uh, food debris, and then you will see that uh, there is a white stuff. Now we are going to fancy uh, devices. I have this, this is my personal. It's a, a quite expensive, bought many, many years on Amazon. This is called water floss or water peak. It has a knob with the setting and the pressure of the water that will come out of this water tank into that two, two speak set on eight. This is for me because the, the more pressure you will put, the more damage you possibly can create. And it's worked the same way, but with water. You clean the, the pockets um, from outside and inside the tubes, so to make sure that there are no debris of the food. Works quite well. I do it only once, maybe per week, no more. It also comes with different tools that I never learned how to use. I just use water peak, that's it, but I'm sure you can uh, go ahead and do it. There are cheaper versions, as cheap as $20. Now, we're talking about toothpaste. This is a regular toothpaste uh, full of sugar. I use very infrequently, no good. Many years ago, I explored, there, is a toothpaste, there are toothpaste that have less sugar. If you do research, on internet, I'm sure you can find now the powders that have absolutely zero um, uh, sugar. This one came from the supermarket and it's uh, herbal and it has half of the sugar. Finally, we are talking about toothbrush. For many years, I decided that uh, this toothbrush is actually money saver. It's a Sonic Care because it in uh, German design, it emits some kind of waves and it actually removes calcium deposits and makes teeth whiter and actually does a pretty good job. Not as good as dentist, but you know, does an excellent job. This is actually a toothbrush by itself. The rest is battery. You plug it in and it's up, uh, and then you, you turn it on and put it. You don't need to brush your teeth, it does the job. You just move around the tools and it does the cleaning. Uh, I will show you, I used to have a more expensive version that was a, uh, a Sony Kia travel design. And it comes with this tra travel charging device and that you can plug into USB port into your computer or USB port. Okay. Um, the cheap version does excellent job, but it has to be a Sony Kia. Now, if you, uh, feel that uh, you, you don't want to use mouse, cheap mouse chemical washes. You can use uh, essential oils. And this is example of tea tree oil. I don't recommend it to use often, maybe once or twice per week, that's it. And warning, use only three drops, no more in that much water. You use it as a mouse wash when you have bacterial infection. So put in the mouse and bring it and spit it out. All essential oils, including tea tree oil, will kill bacterial, bacterial viruses and fungus. And they will kill you if you swallow that. And um, that's it for today, guys. Thank you very much. Like, subscribe. Um, let me know, ask your questions. Bye-bye.